time has come for me to sleep. Lord, I thank thee for thy keep. Watch this night well over me, and teach me, Lord, to trust in thee. Care for children sick and poor. Grant them, Lord, thy blessing. Lord. And this I pray in Jesus' name. Care for my family just the same. Amen. The Boy in the Striped Pajamas follows the story of a German family in the midst of World War II. The father is the commandant of the Nazi concentration camp, Auschwitz, and moves the family to the countryside, closer to the camp, so that he can better carry out his duties. What they are unaware of, however, is their house's proximity to the camp, and thus the children's ability to catch glimpses of what goes on there. Bruno, the Commandant's youngest child, appears to be a fairly innocent boy, despite his father's position. He wants nothing more than to explore the grounds behind his house, which eventually leads him into a friendship with a boy in striped pajamas that sits on the other side of a barbed wire fence, a child his age that is imprisoned in Auschwitz. The bipolarity in this film, as with many films about the Holocaust, is striking. We flip between the homely and domestic scenes of Bruno's home and the dire, grim situation of the Jewish people, both in the concentration camp and in Bruno's house. We see on the one hand the compassion and fairness with which Bruno's parents treat him and his sister, and on the other hand the brutality they either engineer or turn a blind eye towards. While his parents' love for their children and desire for their safety allows us to relate to them, their grotesque complicity in and support of some of the worst crimes in recent history make them incomprehensible. The disconnect is puzzling to Bruno himself, who struggles to reconcile the parents he knows and the world beyond the barbed wire fence they have helped create that seems more confusing and sinister to him each day. That number. Isn't it part of the game or something? It's just my number. Everyone just gives him a different number. Oh, right. Then what happens? I have to go back now. Really? <laughs> it was nice to meet you. Shmoo. And you, Bruno. The film approaches its shocking and chilling end with a cruel sense of justice. Bruno, in his desire to help his friend search for his missing father, disguises himself in an inmate's uniform, digs his way into the camp, and enters. We feel a cold sense of foreboding wash over us as he gets swept up in what looks like a routine roundup. The two worlds Bruno unknowingly inhabited, those of his Nazi parents and that of his Jewish friend, suddenly collide as the movie flashes between scenes of his family searching desperately for him and the roundup he is now part of in the concentration camp. As the movie flits between Bruno's presence in the concentration camp and his family's reaction to finding out that he's gone missing, his father cuts a meeting short in which he's discussing ways of increasing the Nazis' efficiency in killing Jewish people. Our sense of sharp horror increases. The boy in the striped pajamas forces us to wonder, what would we do if we, or our own children, were subjected to the horrific human rights abuses that we ignore every day? How would we feel? Because we experience this story as Bruno, as we enter the concentration camp as him, the horrors appear acutely terrifying and personal in a way that they did not previously, when they were distant in the story. This indicates that we often fail to really see and understand human rights abuses when they're not happening to us. Perhaps what we need to learn in order for human rights to have a better future is that any human could be us. And regardless of how efficiently we shut it out and turn the other way, regardless of how much we are told that other people are not like us in some crucial way, 
Their suffering is as real and painful as ours would be if we were in their position. We should do everything in our power to create societies in which human rights abuses are never considered acceptable, regardless of political and cultural differences. We need to all contribute to creating a world in which nobody has to mourn a child lost to unnecessary and grotesque brutality. Without this attitude, we live in a volatile world in which we ourselves and our children are one stroke of luck away from horrific treatment. <laughs> 